uh, rehearsed uh, message. He throws his arms around them and just loves them. And he calls for the fattened calf to be butchered and they throw a party because for him, the son that was lost is now found. The son that was dead is now alive. You see, for the father, even though the child departed, he never stopped being a son. Okay? This is not just an intimate relationship. This is an intimate investment. No matter where you find yourself right now, no matter how far that you have strayed, you are still God's. Okay? He loves you with this passionate affection. And he has called us and charged us with this obligation because I love you this way. Please follow after me. And I'll close with this. Uh, this is a beautiful story that I just heard about a couple of weeks ago. And it's a very old story. I'm surprised I've never heard it because it has to do with athletics. Uh, Eric Liddell. He was a sprinter in the 1920s. And he was uh, his country's best hope to win a uh, gold medal in the 19, in 1924 Olympics in the 200 meter. But Eric, as he prepared for this uh, particular event, he discovered that the race in the Olympics in 1924 would be run on Sunday. And he was a very strong Christian. And he wanted to honor God with all things. And he just said, I can't run. And he told the Olympic committee of his country um, well in advance, I, I, I won't run, just won't. And they're like, what are you doing? You're crazy. You're, you're a shoe in to win the gold. Everybody's going to remember you. Uh, if you win this gold, just run it. And he's like, no, I can't do that. I, I'm going to honor God. And I don't believe it's honoring to God to run on Sunday. He said, but I will run another race. So he chose to run the 400. And, and those of you who are runners, you know that preparing for the 200 and the 400 are vastly different races, okay? You just don't pick one up and, and after preparing for another and just be great at it. He did, okay? And he ran the 400 in 1924 and he won the gold medal, okay? And uh, they interviewed him afterward and they said, they said, uh, uh, why would you do this? And what do you think you accomplished? And he said, why would I do it? I wanted to honor God. And running on Sunday was not something that I felt was honoring to my God. He is the most important thing to me. And I want to stand near to him. And to stand near to him meant that I set aside this day for him. So I ran and honored him in this 400 meter and he got glory for it. And how do I, we know that he got glory for it? In 2013, we're talking about Eric Liddell. Now, let me ask you, who won the 400 meter in 1996? Who won the 400 meter in 2000? Who won the 400 meter in the last Olympics? Nobody knows. But we know, because, we know about Eric Liddell because he chose to honor God. He said, I want to stand near to him. <coughs> But Eric Liddell's life went on past that. And he chose to become a missionary in China. Okay? And then uh, World War II broke out. Okay? And uh, uh, civilians and Americans specifically were warned, even by the Japanese, get out because we're coming. And he said, no, I've committed my life to these people. So Eric Liddell found himself in a prison camp. Okay? And he was offered the opportunity towards the end of the war um, to leave uh, his prison camp. A prisoner exchange was taking place. But there was a woman there, a Chinese woman, who was pregnant. And he gave up his spot so that she and her baby could go and be free. Eric Liddell died in that place. Why? Because he chose what was, uh, he chose between what was good and what was best. What was good for him would be to leave that prison camp. What was best was for him to stay and honor God. What was good would be for him to run that 200 meter and win the gold. What was best was to honor God, and he did. And the decision that he had to make is the same one we have to make today. Do we wanna live in a radical relationship with God? If we do, if that's our desire, it's got to be one of mutual investment. 
God has made that investment in you. Are you willing to return the favor? If you are, you will experience the same things that Elijah, Elisha, Eric Liddell experienced, the power and the presence of God in your life. If you aren't willing and cling to those things, certain things with a closed fist, you will never experience the power of God in your life. And settle for a second class, cheapened Christianity that knows of God but has not experienced the power of him. It's my prayer for you that you would be those who desire this radical relationship. Not one who is willing to settle for what's second best but pursue Jesus with all your heart and see what he does with your life because we're given this incredible promise in Jeremiah. You guys all know it. I have a plan for your life. A plan to prosper you not to harm you. A plan for your future to give you hope. And that's found walking near to Jesus. So my question to you this morning is will you choose to walk near to him because he passionately loves you? And maybe your action step is for some of you today to say yes to Jesus, to trust him for the first time as your Lord and Savior. He laid down his life to pay for your sin. And he took up his own life and he says, if you'll put your trust in me, I'll grant you eternal life. I'll give you my spirit that will lead you into the way of righteousness. Maybe that's, that's the decision you need to make today. Maybe for some of you others, you've trusted in Christ and you need to become a member of a body. Maybe it's this body. Maybe it's another body in your hometown. Okay, maybe you need to do that. Maybe you need to take your first steps in being baptized. Say, Jesus, I want everybody to know that you're the one that the affection of my heart leans towards. Maybe for some of you, God's calling you to ministry, calling you to minister to the seniors in our church, calling you to minister to the children in our church, calling you to minister to the young families in our church, calling you to minister to the teens in our church. Maybe we want some of you, God's calling to the mission field. My encouragement and my plea for you, don't settle for what's good, but chase after what's best because in that place you will find Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for today and I thank you for the encouragement that God not only gives us this opportunity for relationship, but he desires to have it with us. He doesn't need us at all, but he wants us. And man, that is absolutely amazing. Father, may the gospel transform our heart in its fullness and in its function. May we uh, ever increasingly become more and more like Jesus, like a, a marriage um, of two people. As they uh, come together and they grow together, they begin to think the same thoughts. May that be true of us with our uh, precious Savior. And may our lives be a testimony to him, uh, not only in the things that we say, but the things that we do. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen.